attention to a number of comments we've heard in Canada uh, recently. Our Prime Minister, Stephen Harper, characterized the Israeli attacks in Lebanon last summer as a measured response. Would you agree with that? I personally thought that the response by Israel was excessive, uh, beyond what was needed. Uh, when Hezbollah did capture the two Israeli s soldiers, uh, that was a very bad act. I <coughs> wish they hadn't done it. <coughs> Israel then declared, Prime Minister Olmec declared, that, that this was a national Lebanese government attack against Israel, which was not true. And they responded by bombing 6,000 different sites all over Lebanon, uh, killing more than 1,000 uh, Lebanese citizens. I thought that was excessive. But Israel certainly has a right to defend itself. No one would deny that right. Also, the capture of the Israeli soldier from Gaza, where the Hamas people dug under the wall and captured an Israeli soldier. That was, I wish they hadn't done it. But the fact is that uh, the Hamas holds one Israeli soldier. Israel holds 9,200 Palestinians, including approximately 300 children some of them as young as 12 years old, and about 100 women. And immediately when, when the Palestinians took the Israeli soldier, they offered to swap the soldier immediately for a number of those that Israel was holding. Israel has refused to make any swap uh, to get that soldier back. The U.S. Secretary of State, Condoleezza Rice, says that what we're seeing are the birth pangs of a new Middle East. How do you react mm -hmm. to that? Well, I thought the, the Mideast had a better birth, for instance, when I was president, and we negotiated an end to wars between Israel and Egypt. Uh, when I was elected, there had been four major wars in 25 years. The chief antagonist and threat to Israel was Egypt. And I orchestrated, finally, effectively, it took me two and a half years, a permanent tre treaty of peace between Israel and Egypt, not a word of which has ever been violated. You know, that was an opening to Israel to have permanent peace. And part of their agreement at Camp David was to withdraw Israel's military and political forces from the occupied territories. That was something that Menachem Begin, the, the coup leader, agreed to, and which his own parliament approved overwhelmingly, I think by 85 percent. <coughs> at the same time, uh, he agreed to comply with United Nations Resolution 242, which prohibits the acquisition of territory as a result of war and calls for the withdrawal of Israel from occupied territories. This was something that uh, the Israeli government agreed to. I thought that was the birth pangs of a new era of peace in the Middle East, but I haven't seen anything in recent years that would indicate the birth pangs of a peace in the Middle East. Canada, as you know, is now playing a major role in the fighting in Afghanistan. Do you support NATO's objectives and Absolutely. the United States' uh, objectives in Afghanistan? I fully supported that invasion of Afghanistan with the uh, primary goal to, to root out al-Qaeda, uh, to do away with the, uh, the administration of the Taliban, and to capture Osama bin Laden. And I was uh, deeply concerned and, uh, and disapproved of our abandoning that potentially successful effort and shifting our emphasis into the unwarranted invasion of Iraq. Now I, I'm very supportive. Of, uh, of NATO for having taken up part of this responsibility in, in uh, Afghanistan. As an American, are you embarrassed by George W. Bush and his administration? No, I'm not embarrassed by him. I, I, I disagree with a lot of things that, uh, that President Bush has initiated. I wrote a book last year called Our Endangered Values, and I pointed out a few of the key issues or policies that were a radical departure from all previous administrations, including the administration of his own father. <clears throat> and of other uh, Republican presidents, including Ronald Reagan and Gerald Ford, Richard Nixon, as well as Democratic presidents. Uh, the adoption of a policy of preemptive war is, is unprecedented in the history of our country. It says we will go to war even when our own security is not directly threatened. That's a radical departure. I, I think the uh, breakdown in the separation of church and state is something that I deplored, and I wrote about that in the book. Uh, an, an abandonment of equity in uh, treatment of taxation between the very rich people in America and the working class people of America is another one. The abandonment of many of the environmental laws uh, that had been initiated or at least signed into law by Republican presidents, including Richard Nixon. 
with the uh, pure air and water legislation. Those kind of things are, I, I was a very great concern to me. Another one that's important in this modern day is the abandonment by the Bush administration of every single nuclear arms agreement that has ever been negotiated in the past by Democratic and Republican presidents. But those kind of things uh, caused me a great deal of concern. Just the last question. Realistically, can the Bush administration advance the cause of peace in the Middle East now? Yes, they could, the Bush administration could join in immediately and contribute to the peace in the Middle East. Uh, as you I th may have already mentioned, in the last six years, there hasn't been any effort by the Bush administration to even orchestrate a peace effort. My hope is that this will be reversed soon. If not under the aegis of the United States as now uh, an interlocutor that wouldn't be trusted to be balanced, I think under the aegis of the international um, quartet, which would involve the United States as a preeminent player, but also include the U European Union, the United Nations, and Russia. That's a possibility. And my hope is that there will be uh, an effort made. President Carter, thanks so much for your time. I've enjoyed it.